Hey guys, after months and months of waiting, I finally have my own Raspberry Pi. So after so after that long, I decided that I would uh, do a couple of walkthrough videos on how to use it and what you can do with and what you can do with this amazing piece of technology. Uh, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through what you're going to need in order to get your Raspberry Pi working. Well, first off, you'll need the Raspberry Pi, obviously. I ordered mine from Amazon. I'll include a link in the description. You also need an SD card. You only need a two gigabyte SD card uh, just to get off started with. And if your computer doesn't already have one, you'll need an SD card reader. You'll also need a power source, a USB, a micro USB cable, and if you want to minimise the amount of uh, power you're going to need, your power sockets you're going to need, you can also have a powered USB hub. You can also if optional to protect your computer, protect your brand new investment from being damaged, you could also get a case. You can get these very easily for a couple of pounds. Right, let's get started with uh, setting up this Raspberry Pi. Okay, I'll take it out of the box first and get rid of the anti-static. Now this is a Model B Raspberry Pi, but I think most of the instructions will be pretty much the same for a Model A. Okay, let's put it into the case. Once I figure out which way around it's supposed to go. Yeah, it's supposed to go like this. It clips in. In. and then this goes on top. Once I finally figure out which way it's to go. Okay, and there your Raspberry Pi is protected. Okay, I'm going to pause the video for a moment and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to head over to my computer to show you how to get the SD card for the Raspberry Pi working. Okay, you'll need two things uh, to get your SD card compatible with, Ras with the Raspberry Pi. You need the latest edition of Wheezy Raspbian and you'll also need an, a disk imager. In this case I'm going to use Win32 disk imager. Obviously I'll include a link to all of these in the description. First off, you'll, so you'll need to launch Win32 disk imager and uh, choose wherever you have your SD card. Choose whichever S your SD card and then choose wherever you have your image of this Wheezy Raspbian saved. Should be in here somewhere. Here it is. Then make sure that the device letter is correct, just in case you, uh, because if you don't get it right, you could end up writing, uh, rewriting the wrong folder. Make sure everything is make sure everything is in order, and then click write. Writing to a physical device can corrupt it. On you go. Just click yes. And then this may take a few minutes, depending on the speed of everything. So I'm just going to pause the video. Whilst I'm waiting for the SD card to write, I'll also run through some of the other things you'll need in order to get thing get it uh, working. You'll also need an Ethernet cable. Now this is very important if you want to get your Raspberry Pi to connect to the internet. Now this only applies to Model B Raspberry Pis. Model A Raspberry Pis are a little bit more complicated in which you'll need to buy a wireless card since it only has since it's a lot smaller and doesn't have an Ethernet port. And you'll also need, if you want to connect it to a computer with a, to a monitor, which you obviously do, you'll need a HDMI cable. Just a regular HDMI cable, and uh, not a mini HDMI cable. Surprisingly, uh, the Raspberry Pi has a full-sized HDMI cable. Alright, then I'll I'll just stop this and then go back to my SD card because it looks like it's nearly done. Okay, that's it done. Now let's head back to the Raspberry Pi itself. Alright, now that we've got the SD card formatted and set up, let's get the whole thing set up. Okay, right, first off we'll need to put in the SD card. Like so. 
And then we need to collect the tally box. Just here. And then like that. And then plug in a your USB hub, which is somewhere. So you can plug in your USB keyboard and your mouse. Here it is. Okay, let's put this in. It's probably best that you get a USB 3 port so that uh, you can give enough power to the Raspberry Pi if you're going to be doing graphics intensive stuff like, for example, running a media server. Okay. Power up your USB hub. Don't connect anything just yet. Then you connect the network to. You can connect it directly to your router, or if, like me, the router is really far away, you can connect it to a switch. For bit for speed and quickness, you should probably put it directly into the router if you're creating a media server. But uh, just for quickness and for the fact, I really don't want to go fiddling around with my. Network. I'll just plug it into the switch up here. Okay, and now finally we can plug in the power supply. Switch it on. Okay, just move the camera so you can see the TV. Oops, that's the wrong bit. Switch sources. Oh, yeah, I need to plug it in first. Whoops. Stupid me. Okay. Okay. And there we go. We're on. Okay, what's it saying down here? It's not focusing. Okay. But what it's doing is initialising and setting everything up. Debian, this wheezy Raspbian, is very good for that kind of thing. It just does it all automatically. And then all you have to do is click boot to desktop. Hold on. Aha. Right. Okay. Okay, now what to do first is boot to desktop. Let's do that. Let's boot to desktop. If I can Go on. Boot to desktop. Yes, go for it. Okay, what's it doing here? <laughs> Is it supposed to be doing this? <laughs> oh, what's it doing? Partition has been resized. Okay. The only way to turn off your Raspberry Pi is to unplug it. The only, that's the only way you can do it. There's no on-off button. 
The only way to tell it's actually on is because of the red light. Okay. Once it's doing all, it's doing all its initialising and doing its thing. Come on. I was under the impression that all you had to do was click start X, but I appear to have been proven wrong. Oh well. But here we go. We are in a Raspberry Pi environment. And that's you. You finally got your Raspberry Pi up and running. In the next edition I will be starting I will be starting to do more advanced things. In my next edition I'm going to be adding a hard drive. To the Raspberry Pi to increase its storage and then I'm going to be making making it into a media server so that you can access it from you can access all your music videos photos whatever files you want from any computer on the network for a lot cheaper than one of those network attached storage things thanks very much for watching and please comment rate and subscribe and have a look out for next week